in the midst of all of us and how God is working in his body. He is working in his vessels. And we know every one of us who study the scriptures know that we are at a crucial time in the lives of men on the earth. And so we've been studying about, uh, yesterday we talked about um, the manifestation of the prophetic word from the prophets being manifested. Uh, and uh, our own elder um, went for the book of Matthews, which a lot of references went back to the prophets. And so as I was meditating on that, um, uh, these scriptures came to me because the scripture clearly declares that we have to walk after the spirit, walk in the spirit of God, not by the uh, walking after the flesh. And so this morning, we're going to talk about um, the manifest yourself in me. And we're going to see in, from the book of John, uh, all the things that are happening in this current time are in the scriptures, but we have to be vessels uh, uh, prepared for God to manifest himself in us. And so we're going to cover a few scriptures. And um, the first one is coming out of John, the 14th chapter. And this particular scripture in the 14th chapter is when the disciples was talking to the Lord. He says, he began to speak to them and say, let not your heart be troubled. Believe uh, in God. If you believe in God, believe also in me. I'm going to skip down in this is the 14th chapter because now he's talking personally to his disciples. And I always like God uh, when the Lord takes his disciples uh, away and begin to expound and to give them revelation and give them understanding. And as he's talking to them, he began to say, um, um, that uh, in my father's house are many mansions and how he's going away. And that um, if they believe in God, to believe also in him. And as he was talking, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest and how can we know the way? So this is, you know, every time you are being trained, you thank God when you are trained by the, 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 the head himself, you know, it's on one thing to get it second handed, but it's another thing to get it first handed, <laughs> you know, and that's what we're going to see in this 14th chapter that Christ was walking with them. And as he was walking with them and, um, uh, they begin to, uh, ask him questions. Paul, uh, Thomas said, how can we know the way? And Jesus let them know that he is the way, the truth and the life. And so I went down to verse, um, six and it says, and Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in verse 9, as he began to continue to talk to them, personally counseling them, um, the subject came up, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him, you know my father. But then Philip says something, <laughs> he said to the, to the Lord, um, uh, show us the father. But this stood out to me in verse 9. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long with you? I've been personally, physically here with you. And how say unto you say to, to me, show me the Father? He began to say, believeth thou not that I am in the Father? The Father is in me. And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So just like we was yesterday was thinking about the scriptures and how the, the, uh, the manifestation of what God was doing with Joseph and Mary, and he was speaking to them through angels and talking to them. And now the Lord himself is there with them, but they are still not getting it in the spiritual realm that God himself is in Christ. God himself, and as we go down into this chapter, uh, looking down to the fourth chapter, we go to verse 20, uh, um, verse 16, and I will pray the Father, he will give you another comforter, because he's telling them, I'm leaving you, and a lot of times people, when, you, when they're physically with you, you feel, okay, I'm with them, but God wants them to, and the Lord is letting them know, even if I'm not physically with you, I am with you. I, you know, I may not, I, my body may not be here. You can't see, handle me now. You can't touch me now. You can't see me now, but I will never, ever, ever leave you. I will always be with you. And he tells them, he said that whatever they ask in his name, the father would do it. So he's giving them revelation of not just going by what they see or what they, their five senses are, are, are mindful of. And, and to help them to move into understand the spiritual 
um, aspect of his being. He's not just flesh and blood. And so he begins to tell them that uh, he that he's going was expedient for him to go because the comforter will come. And the comforter is coming now because of the work of Christ. I looked in Leviticus in the uh, the uh, Leviticus the twenty sixth chapter said in the Old Testament God walked with them, His presence was with them with the ark and 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 the tabernacle and the things that they carried. He was walking with them, but from the time of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection and the day of Pentecost. Now God can come inside. And it says in Corinthians, I will walk in you. And this is what Christ is trying to bring to his disciples to understand that God the Father is in him. To understand not just uh, looking at things from the surface or looking at things from the carnal perspective. And then I began to think about that and, and they begin to talk about, um, I think, Giovanna, you pray. Uh, not to be wavering, which came, uh, that, that thought came to me too. When we are waver, James said, we are like the, uh, a wave, the wind is blowing and we're not steadfast. So th my mind went to um, the, the, um, Elijah when he was doing battle. He asked God to open the eyes of his servant. That's in Second Kings. Open his eyes to understand to see in the spiritual realm because his servant um, was with him, but he was looking at things from the natural perspective. And God, he prayed for him in Second um, uh, Kings, uh, the sixth chapter, that his eyes would be open. And I want to read a little bit of that because um, sometimes when we are, we know we are saved and we know God is with us, but then how much uh, do we really grasp what he's saying when he's saying to his disciples that my father is in me. I am in my father. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, he tells them, then from that time on, we will be in you. And so um, I looked at Second Kings, and I'm going to read a little bit of that, um, what happened with Elisha. And I want to read verses 17 through 20. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to the Mirror Life Prayer Call. It is being recorded. My name is Doris Allen. And now we, we are right now in the book of John and referring to the book of Kings about not just being a disciple of Christ, walking with him, but to understand that even though we do not physically see him, he is the whole entire power of God, uh, of the Godhead is inside of us. And so uh, it, the Lord began to uh, speak to me about Second Kings when uh, the prophet Elijah was surrounded by the armies and his servant began to become fearful. And in that fear, he began to talk about, you know, look at all those around him. And Elijah prayed for God to open the eyes of his servant. And I think that's what needs to, for us, our eyes need to be open, which is going to take us to Ephesians, which is a prayer that Paul prayed, that we understand clearly who we are and whose we are. And we are not, even though I think one time we see each other as just beings in the flesh, you know, and we judge a lot of time people, well, their appearance and this and thing, but we are no longer just flesh. We are now born of the spirit of God. And Elijah prays something, Second Kings, the sixth chapter, verses 17. And I'm going to read that. Um, Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down, uh, and then, and when they came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people. I pray thee with blindness. And he smote the people with blindness according to the words of Elisha. And Elijah said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass that when they were come to Samaria, that Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these people 
that they may see. And the Lord opened the eyes. That stood out to me that when you walk with God to understand that you're not walking in a, the natural anymore. God himself is there with you. That's what Jesus was talking to his disciples in um, John the 14th chapter. I will be in you as it was with Elijah and he was with them. Now he's in us and Elijah prayed and God answered the prayer immediately. Blind these people. You know, when we look at the first church and disciples, their shadows as they move because God was in them. But we talked yesterday about, you know, this revelation and this thought as God was talking to, to Philip. I've been so long time with you, yet you still don't know me. You know, we can continue, we can go so long with the Lord and working and moving in the Lord. And there's several scriptures where he would talk about food and they were saying, well, he's talking about we didn't bring any food. He says, you still don't understand. So I'm praying that God will help us to understand and to see that he is in us. Just like Elijah prayed, Lord, blind these people. The mouth of the people of God, which we're going to go to the scriptures too, just takes us to uh, Luke. That God, it says in Luke, to settle in your heart. Settle in your heart and in your mind. As James said, don't be like a wind or unstable. You know, don't be wavering to fact to know that God is in you. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and you submit yourself. And so it made me think about um, Ephesians. Ephesians, the first chapter, which the apostle Paul prayed for uh, our eyes to be open to. We would understand. And we're going to read that prayer. Because I think in order to move now, it, when James says not to be, not to waver, he's talking about when you pray, you, it, when you waver, you, you look like, um, uh, wave is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. But we are to be steadfast and to understand just like Christ's disciples, he walked with them. They saw the miracles, but the problem is they did not comprehend or understand that Christ now is going to be in them. He said, we will come and when the day of Pentecost, we will come and me and the father will come and dwell in you. We will be in you. Thank you, Jesus. And the works that I do, shall you do even greater works. But that has to be settled. That's why James said it has to be settled in our minds and settled in, um, we're going to read Luke talk, having this settled in us. Because uh, the mind is where and the heart is back and forth between um, carnal and spiritual. Back and forth between them. Um, because in order to move in the realm that God wants to do, even though he has said to us, I will walk in you and I will talk in you. Which we're going to go to Luke to read that. And, to, and that's where Luke's tell us to settle it in our heart. Who we are in God. I'm going to pray, uh, read the prayer in Ephesians, the first chapter, which you probably read it a few times yourself, but we're going to read it. And um, the reason I, I, I want to pick up on that prayer is because the prophet prayed for Elijah uh, uh, Elijah to, to see. And when he did see, he saw chariots. It, it, we, I don't think we are mindful of the presence of God and the angels of God encamped about the heirs of salvation. And the power that God has given to us, thank you, Jesus, if we are led by his spirit, if we are, are conscious of his presence, as Elijah said, Lord, blind these people. And it wasn't like, well, I got to pray and moan and carry on. No, you did, Lord, because he was conscious of God being right there, right there with him. Thank you, Jesus. And God did it. And then he said, Lord, Open the eyes of these people. The disciples were the same. They didn't have to go into uh, long prayers. and They just was mindful that God was now in them. Not was he just in them so we can feel the anointing. We can feel his. No, he's in us to rule and to make to, to guide us into what we are to do. And so um, we're going to pray Ephesians, the first chapter, talk about um Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father 
from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all our spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And I think what's happening now, sometimes the world comes in or the cares of this world comes in and it kind of messes with our, our uh, mind or our heart. And we kind of settle and, you know, I can uh, tap into God, tap into God. But we don't have to tap into God because God is in us. We don't have to tap in. But what has to happen is our mind. When he says be steadfast, unmovable, always, our minds have to be uh, not wavering. James talking about our minds being wavering. Thank you, Jesus. That's where the, the issue comes in. And it says, according to as he has chosen us in himself before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. We have been made set, accepted because we have now received the baptism. And it said, in whom we have, pre, we have a redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasures, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Thank you, Jesus. Being predestinated according to the purpose of his will. So all of us who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now we have God himself in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we we don't have to, uh, uh, how you say, uh, they're talking about, Jane talk about the faith, not uh, believing and praying, not wavering in our faith when we pray and ask for something. It's like if you know God is right here with you, you know, like not that you have to pray, as I sometimes say, we well, you know, pray to you, do you get a breakthrough? But the, the consciousness and the mind being transformed to know that you, he is here. He is always here. And, and so I, I begin to look at that. It says in Corinthians to be steadfast. And we're going to go to Corinthians 15. The reason I think it is because as believers and many, all of us on this prayer line has felt the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. So strong and so powerful. And but there are times when problem, when trouble come, for some reason, like at times, it's like um maybe I'm only talking about me. But sometimes it's like, okay, I have to kind of uh, reach him. I have to try to try to reach God. Thank you, Jesus. But that's not true. And in the 15th chapter of Corinthians, the first verse says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you. The gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and, and wherein you stand. You stand in the gospel. It says, by which also ye are saved if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you unless you have believed in vain. Thank you, Jesus. So it said, keep in memory, keeping which is our mind. Keeping our mind. And so many times... Things will come and our mind will get locked on to it, caught up in it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Caught up in the situation, caught up in the circumstances and not understand of, about the gospel. As Christ began to tell his disciples, I'm going. And they were saying, well, show us the fathers. And how can you speak to us and not speak to them? And he told them clearly when the spirit, when you receive the Holy Spirit, he will be with you. We will be with you. And I think sometimes we, just maybe I'm talking to me, you know, we feel we're spiritual beings, but at other times we actually fall back into be carnal in our thinking. Okay. Uh, Corinthians, the fifth chapter, um, 15th chapter. And I wanted to read um, 
the first, the final verse, 15 chapter has 58 verses. The last verse in 58, uh, 15 chapter of Corinthians is verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. It what James said, not wavering. You know, I think if, if like the disciples, when he was with them, they could see him, they could touch him, they could eat with him. But he's told them it's expedient that I go because the Holy Spirit will not come. And when the Holy Spirit come, that is God, that is all the Godhead now in you. All the power seated in heavenly places. Hallelujah. That's why he says in the end, end of the 15th chapter of Corinthians, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you as you, uh, you know that your labor is not in vain. Thank you, Jesus. And so we're going to pray for ourselves that there will, we will be more mindful of God's presence. I think that's why Paul kept saying he kept uh, dealing with his flesh. Because the flesh talks too. The flesh is talking to us to carry about what it wants, our feelings. You know, this is what I want. I want that. And, and so there the flesh is warring against the spirit. And so sometimes that we are not moving and manifesting in the spiritual realm because our flesh is really kind of trying to take control. It's trying to take control. Thank you, Jesus. It's trying to tell us. Uh, all the things that manifest, which is the five senses, deal with the flesh. The flesh needs the five senses, okay? It needs to touch and feel, and it needs to taste and to handle. And, uh, uh, this is the flesh. The flesh operates in that realm. Hallelujah. But God wants us to understand and to operate in the spiritual realm. And therefore, when we come uh, with issues in this world, to be mindful that he's there. And uh, Luke, the 21st chapter, verses 14 and 19, and then we're going to open it up and then pray. Um, because we, at these, on this prayer line, the mirror life prayer line, all of us are serious about our salvation. Pray Thank you, Jesus. And But every now and then. Pray for New York City. And pray for New York City. I pray all of them. Okay. And uh, all of us, and we have New York City and a few places being flooded, and people that we know. Exactly. But. Hmm? The bacteria and the mold. Back, oh, bacteria. We'll pray against the bacteria and mold because I'll oh, talk about that. But and in Luke, it says to us, when we come up against situations, because Christ is in us, the 14th verse and the 19th verse says, um, well, you can read it all the 14, uh, the 21st chapter of Luke, because it says, before all these things, they shall, uh, they shall lay their hands on you. Talk about the time when the church will be under persecution. The body of Christ will go under a test. And it says, um, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. And I thought about the it. That means the time will come when people will look to see if Christ is in you. You know, is he in you? If the whole world will look to see, is God really in these vessels? As he did with the Hebrew boys. As he did with uh, 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 Daniel in the lion's den. As he did with those in the first church. Is God really in them? And it will come to a time of testing to see. But God says, it shall turn to you. This is Luke, the 21st chapter. For a testimony, which means in Revelation said, they overcame the adversary with the power of their testimony and the blood of the lamb. Okay. So now we're coming to the stage in human history. Do we have a testimony? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Do we have, a, sure, I have a testimony. I know God healed me, he healed me. But the time will come when we will be the epistle. We will be the epistle of God like they did with Polycarp. You know, well, are we going to burn you at the stake? Uh, what you going to do? Uh, are you going to denounce him? So the time is going to come that we have to settle in our hearts and make it clear in our thoughts that Christ is in us. God is in us. This is what it says in the um, 14th verse, the 13th verse of Luke 21. And it shall come to pass for uh, it shall come. It shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts. 
not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents, by brethren, by kinsfolk, by friends. Some of you sh shall they cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. Thank you, Jesus. In your patience, possess ye your souls. And I think this is coming to the now because this testimony, it said, it shall turn to you for a testimony. Turn, that means not just testifying out of our mouth. <laughs> It means we gonna be the testimony. Are we really? Are we really know that God is in us? Thank you, Jesus. And He clearly said, uh, "He will give us a mouth." He said, "You shall be betrayed both by parents, by brethren, by kinsmen, by friends. Some of you, some of you shall uh, they cause to be put to death." Now, this is talking about being, uh, uh, when, we, when he said, I will come to you and manifest myself. That was in John, the 14th chapter, verse 21. Jesus said, I will come to you and manifest myself in you. Manifest himself. And the time is going to come to whether or not we are on the shore, are we on the banks, or are we in the deep waters with Christ? Or are we out in the deep with him? As John was called, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come into the deep. In the deep water. I mean, and he, he started walking. Thank you, Jesus. But the waves and the storms and stuff came so that he ended up losing sight and began to sink. Thank you, Jesus. And so I think it's coming to the point now that either we are going to have it settled in our hearts that we wouldn't be like James. We would not be a uh, uh, wavering, the, a wave that is like a uh, like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed with everything that's going on. Either we're going to be settled and steadfast, unmovable, the planting of God, and it clearly says, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. You read Luke, the 21st chapter. You're talking about the things that's going to come when it's not going to be just what we say. You know, it's going to be like the disciples. They said, you know, it's, they preached no more in, the, in Christ's name. And then they said, we're going to beat you. We're going to crucify you. We're going to do what you're going to do. Okay. But they held fast. And so I'm praying because the word of God is true. If those prophets that uh, uh, Tanya talked about yesterday, all of those prophets, Jeremiah, all of them was tested. Uh, all of those prophets, Isaiah, they had to, they got a word from the Lord. But their own personal life, their own personal flesh was under attack because they held the word of God. You know, Jeremiah, they put him in a hole and one of the servants said, Lord, he's going to die down there. You know. Paul talked about how many times he'd been beaten and stuff because he was holding fast to the word of God and not because he had to reach out to God because God was in him and God is in us too. He's in us too, but we can't, we have to remember James not to waver. And the, I always think as, the Lord told me one time, he said, if the foot, uh, uh, he told me, um, about a wavering, I can't think of that scripture. If you faint in the day of adversity, he gave me that scripture because I was out with tracks and doing things and I was going through and people was going, just all kind of stuff. He said, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. And I kept saying, okay, Lord, I need to become strong. I need more strength. I need more strength from you. I need more from you to be able to stand, you know, and in the day of adversity, do we faint in the day of our test and look at the things that we fall 
we are weakened by. You know, it could be, can I've had cancer, I've had losing my eyesight completely. Couldn't find I had cataracts at a young age, couldn't see. Somebody's face couldn't see. You know, the things that come and bombard your flesh is warring in you or, you know, various things that come and it trouble your heart. And then you're like, well, I'm weakened by this. You know, it's talk about kosher. We talk about Christ. Christ, on every point, every single point, as a human being, felt it. Even when he was on the cross, he kept saying, "Father, Father, why have thou forsaken me?" You know, his disciples when he was praying, "Can't you watch but one hour?" You know, if you be the Son of God, all these things happen to him. So I'm gonna be praying for the body of Christ. Number one, that Christ will manifest Himself in us. You know, as, as he says, silver and gold have I number such as I have in the name of Jesus rise up and walk. That means Christ would manifest himself in them and through them. Okay, so we need the manifestation of Christ through the various things. Because Christ tells them in the 14th chapter of John that the works, he said, even if you don't realize that God is with me, for the work's sake, you can see that what I'm doing is God in me. So we pray that God will bring us to the place where he can manifest himself in us and through us, through signs and wonders and healings yeah. and all these things. Because that's what Jesus said. You know, if you don't see, you see yeah. me, but you see the manifestation through the work. So we're asking God to manifest himself through us and we will not be moved and we will not be wavering. And so we got to, that's what we're praying for, that we will be established and settled. Okay. So we're going to open up and then we're going to pray. Amen. Anyone want to say anything? Please uh, speak up. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so if we have no comments, we're going to go ahead on and talk to the Lord. Okay, Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We thank you for the work that you are doing in us. We thank you and praise you for reminding us through these scriptures, Lord God. Don't let our minds be wavering. Don't let our hearts be troubled. Ye got by shut the Lord God, but help us, O oh God, to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We know that our labor is not in vain. Not only our labor, Lord, but you are present with us. My God, you have made your abode in us. You have sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise, O oh God. We thank and praise as you remind us to Elijah, Lord God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Not only that, God, we the angels of the Lord is encamped about the heirs of salvation. My God, we thank and praise you. It's you that is walking in us. It's you that is talking in us, God. Help us, O oh God, to not to be moved like the wave of the sea tossed and driven with every wind and doctrine. My God, we know there's a lot of wind and doctrine that's moving in this world, but help us not to be tossed and driven by my koshata Oh God, help us not to be moved, Lord God, but God to be settled in our heart, God. Thank you and praise you, Lord God, for the ministry, oh God, that you have purposed in us, God. Every single one in the sound of my voice, God. Help us not to waver. Help us, oh God, to be established in thee, oh God. Help us in our mind. So a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Help us not to be moved. Oh, my shut up. Help us not to be moved when death, the scripture comes about, what shall separate us from? Shall death, shall, shall principalities, Lord God, all the things that the world will bring, all the things that we might experience, God, cannot separate us from you. My God, only if we, as Paul said, whose faith have been shared, Shipwreck, my coco shay, Lord God. But help us, Lord God, that our faith will stand. Our faith will stand through the tests and trials. We lift up Javonda, Lord God. Your servant, your mouthpiece, Lord God, your vessel, Lord God, your vessel, Lord God, that you will continue to strengthen her, build her up, Lord God. Everything that she experienced, Lord God, we pray that you will be her shield and her buckle. God, that you will be her breastplate. Oh, God, that you will will be all that she need, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, there'll be no lack. The word said there is no lack. 
God, this work that you have purposed in this earth, we thank you for calling us, God. We thank you for every single vessel in the sound of my voice, God. You will perfect that which concerns us, God. We know that you are moving in this world. You are touching families. You're touching communities. You're you are moving in communities, God, and states and in worlds, God. You are shaking the very foundation of this world, God. You said the, we are not to be moved. My God, we are not to be moved, God, by the things that you're doing. Hallelujah. The things that you must do, God. To bring forth repentance in this world, God. What you're doing in New York State, Lord God. The conditions. What you're doing in, in Hawaii. What you're doing in California. What you're doing in, in so many nations, God. Yeah. We reminded of Job, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Even when he said this, these things are in your arsenal, God. My God, I thank and praise you that your will be done on this earth. And as the body of Christ, help us not to be like a wave tossed and driven. My God, with the weak hearts, with wind and doctrine, God, and, and the things that are coming on this earth. But help us to be establishing you, God. Move in New York, God. Bring forth repentance, God. My God, New York has purpose to even in the time of the children being born up until the ninth month, they said they can be aborted. We know judgment is coming on that state, Lord God, because they done made laws. Oh God, hallelujah. And they cannot stand because they're not standing in you, Lord God. I pray that souls will be converted. Souls will come out of every situation that you allow to come upon this earth, God. And we, the body of Christ, God, my God, help us, God. Oh God, you said that we will be a testimony they will turn to us to see, Lord God, if God is in us. They will turn because we have been set as salt of the earth. We have been set as a city set upon a hill that kept our so-called to give light to this world, God. Help us, God. Oh, yes. Help us, God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, oh God, to know in whom we believe and that you're able to keep that which we have committed unto you. Not only to keep us, God, but to direct our path. You said, oh God, when we come before those, oh God, didn't even take a thought because in that time the Holy Spirit will speak through us, God. We pray for the manifestation of your presence in each and every one of us, God, that our minds will be settled and rooted and grounded in Christ God that we shall not be moved my God we shall not be moved God we thank and praise you we know that times troubling times are coming God and we pray to God that we would be those anchors we would be standing on that rock that men will see and we will be able to direct them to you Lord God in the times of trouble Lord God for my so that you will be your vessels God holy we will not be troubled by the thing, even death, Lord God, even sickness, God, even anything, there is nothing can separate us from you. Hallelujah. Help us in the, our minds and our hearts, oh God, not to be moved, not to be moved, but to stand fast, stand fast, oh God, and continue, Lord God, for the faith which was once delivered unto us. We pray for every single soul in the sound of my voice. We pray for New York, South Carolina, every state on this globe, Lord God, every soul, my God, for the peace of Jerusalem. Even now, the nations are lining up, God. My God, your word is being fulfilled. My God, they're even talking about the third temple, God. We are so close, my God, to your coming. It's time for the body of Christ to stand fast. There's Daniel when it came, when he hear about Sokoshe, the time of him being a complete witness, not just from his prayers. The time came, God, if he pray another time, oh, Lord, he said they threatened him to put him into the lion's den, but he did not. He went right up there and prayed, Lord. Thank you, Trey. He went right up there and prayed. The Hebrew boy said, Lord, they said, if you're going to bow down when you hear the music, how we going to put you in the fire? They went right on and continued. He said, we're not going to bow down, not even in the secret place. 
place. We will not be moved by so called shame, but they know in whom they believe. Help us to understand. John reminded us, God. Philip said, show us the Father. And you said, I've been so long time with you, and you still don't know who I am. My God, help us not to be with you all this time and not to really know you. My God, not to understand that you are the mighty God. My Sakor Shay, not just sitting in heaven, because we are now seated in heavenly places. We are with you, Lord God, and you are with us. And we thank you for the power and the manifestation of your presence. Set a watch before our mouth, God. That we sin not with our tongue. Help us not to mind to go shed. Oh God, help us not to say things, God. Hallelujah. We don't know. Let's do like so many of them. They're, they're meditating in our hearts. God, we don't understand. Let me say, I meditate in my heart. I may understand what you're saying, but I'll meditate, Lord God, until you give us revelation, God. Help us to be still and know that you're God. My God, we thank you for the grace and mercy. Strengthen your vessels, oh God. Use them, God. We need every apostle, every prophet, every teacher, every evangelist, God, every, every single soul, God, your pastors. We need them to be rooted and grounded in you. My God, unmovable but always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain, God. You are working. We cannot be, I can't stress it enough, like James said, we cannot be like the wind. My God, tossed and driven. My God, and with every wind and doctrine, God. My God, help us to settle it in our hearts, God. Touch our minds and our hearts and to know in whom we, hallelujah, have been purchased by. You purchased us and sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, as Elijah said, not only as he was talking to his servant, Lord, because it said in the past, you was with them, but now you are in us. <laughs> you are now dwelling in us and greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Let our minds be settled. Let our hearts, oh God, hallelujah, be settled. For we can met our families, our children, every situation, nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing can take us out your hands. This is the word of the Lord. And we thank and praise you for the equipping us, God, and manifesting your presence in us with signs and wonders. God, my God, as you honored Elijah's voice when he said, blind them, they were blinded. When he said, open their eyes, their eyes was open. Help us to understand we are your body. My God, we have the, the greater one on the inside of us. And we thank you for the unction of that Holy Spirit. Help us to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. My God, and not to be moved, hallelujah, in this season and time. For we commit ourselves into your hands. We say yes to your will, your way, and your word. We thank you for salvation and deliverance coming to every single one of our houses and our children. Snatching them out even out of the fire, Lord. Snatching them out the fire. My God, raising them from the dead. My God, there is nothing too hard for you. Help us to understand that, God, and to speak in confidence. Be confident, you told me one time. Be confident. My God, help us to be confident in you, Lord God, as we commit ourselves unto you. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. My God, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. My God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, hallelujah. Anyone wants to say anything before we... You're free at this time. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Mother, for yeah, the prayer. Sorry. Oh, oh. Yeah, thank you, Mother, for the prayer, and I thank Mother Thompson said to God, be the glory. Yes. So we thank you for your prayer and your teaching. Yeah, being steadfast, immovable, that's just the position and the posture yes. we have to take in this hour. Yes. Great tribulation is coming, mm -hmm. but he said, you know, he's given us peace, so we shouldn't be moved at all. We shouldn't be surprised or shocked or struck with no kind of amazement, but yes. just standing still and knowing that he's God. Right. And maintain our position and our posture of praise and worship to him. Amen. 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 So we praise God. Anyone else have anything to say? Thank God for. 
Well, we thank God for you joining. We all on an assignment. We have been personally chosen by God himself to walk in and talk in. And we know that he's walking in us and talking to us because he sealed us up with his Holy Spirit. And we are more than conquerors through Christ, which strengthens us. He is our joy and our song. And every single one of us is called to go forth and to magnify him. And as it said in the scriptures, that time will come and they will turn to us for a testimony. And sometimes it's not just a testimony of what we say but what we do and whether or not we present our own bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So I know that all those on this prayer line have purpose and God is using us and we want to continue to feast on the word of God. And as remember Philip, when Philip said to the Lord, show us, we don't need to be the place that God already, he has sealed us up with his spirit. Philip said that before the manifestation before he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that was before, because God Christ told him, when he is come, he will baptize you, he, he will fill you with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so when they received the power of the Holy Spirit, they was able to stand against, if you look at all the disciples, how they departed from this earth, they didn't just preach Christ, but they stood their full entire body surrendered unto God. And so we want to know we have the Holy Spirit now and we have the word that we will not be swayed. And James clearly says, don't be like a wave uh, of the sea driven with every wind and tossed. So we want to be steadfast and we know that God has heard our prayer this morning and we are going to meditate on that. And when we are faced with anything, anything or anybody Elijah made it clear, Lord, that help the eyes of our understanding to understand that we have been predestined to represent Christ, to show forth his praise. That's why God called us and he yeah. will equip us. It's not, I always was talking to um, Javon and I talked to my sister and my elder uh, yesterday was giving her testimony. God chose all types of vessels so that no flesh would be, would be uh, glorified. So he didn't always choose articulate like Moses said, I can't speak and, and Jeremiah said, I'm just a babe. And he chose us so that we would be yielded to him and that he would get the glory. So every single vessel on this prayer line, we thank God for you and God will manifest himself in you and through you, through your words and through his, his, his power, healings, salvation, deliverance, and whatever the world wants to do to you. So we pray that this has been a blessing to you. If there's no more remarks, the Mural Life Prayer Call will be by the grace of God next Monday. And where the intercessor will be seeking the face of God in prayer at 530. I think you'll log on a little bit early before 530. But um, we pray that this has been a blessing to you. I'll give you the scriptures, John, the 14th chapter. And Kings is a reference of Elijah. Um, praying that his servant could see in the spirit realm. And then Ephesians, the prayer that Paul prayed um, uh, about the eyes of our understanding. And then down to Corinthians talking about being steadfast and um, keep these, keep what you have heard about Christ in your memory, which means in your mind. Don't let everything enter into your thoughts and, t and take you away from what God has spoken to you personally. And through the scriptures. And then we close with Luke saying, settle in your hearts. And um, uh, this song came to me when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. And then another one came to me, purify me. You know, sometimes I pray, press on, purify me. You know, some purify my mind, my heart, whatever might be uh, coming in the way. Because a lot of times you can things can come in and you just have to say, Lord, purify me, sanctify me. Don't let... Uh, anything uh, stay in me that's not of you. So we pray this has been a blessing. If anyone have any last remarks, we're going to um, close out. And uh, of course, we're going to ask Mother Thompson to say our priestly prayer over us. And uh, just thank God. Okay. Mother Thompson, could you close us out? Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Me? Okay. I 
want to thank you, Mother Allen, um, or it would not have a shock at what's coming. Thank you for um, letting us know, and some of us are seeing it now, mm -hmm. just in a different way. Yes. Praise God that he keeper.